Welcome back, everybody. You know, you may have heard a lot about healthcare disparities recently, but what does that really mean, especially when it comes to our local communities? Well, today, Dr. Rochelle Dunham, the Executive and Medical Director for Metropolitan Human Services District, is here to talk about a disparity and how to move towards health equity. So important that we are talking about this today. Dr. Dunham, welcome back. Hey, good morning. Good Thank to you. see you as always. You know, I agree with what I just said at the top of the show. Mm -hmm. You hear about healthcare disparities all the time, mm -hmm. but let's talk about what a disparity is first. Yeah. So we first want to distinguish the difference between a disparity and an inequity. Mm -hmm. So disparities really have to do with access and quality of care. Right. So you don't have clinics in your neighborhood, so you can't get there real, e real easily because you have transportation, right. you may have kids, you can't get there. That's an issue with disparity. It is. But equity has to do with having maximal opportunity for good health. Come on. So I may have a clinic in my neighborhood, but it's not staffed properly. Right. They don't have enough medications, their hours aren't good. So it's not an equitable situation. And you know, there are a lot of factors, everybody, that lead to these health care mm -hmm. disparities. What are some of those factors? And moreover, what populations do we see? the most health care disparities. So disparities are directly related to those social determinants of health, with have to, which has to do with education, has to do with poverty, because you need to know what you don't know and That's know right. what you need to know in order to promote access to things that are going to be healthy for you. But typically, um, ideas and perceptions about people that are discriminatory in nature really promote disparities mm. because decisions are made based upon those non-scientific, non-clinically based ideas about people. The other thing is um, there are health care policies that are in place. Right. Um, if you got a seat at the table and you have the power to put these things in place um, over sustained periods of time, this affects generations of people mm -hmm. and their health care. And so these things are perpetuated year after year, decade after decade, and it really is difficult to undo this if you don't have the power. And that is the problem, you that. know, like you mentioned, Dr. Dunham, if they don't have a seat at the table, mm -hmm. how are they supposed to be an advocate for the change that needs to be seen in our communities because it's communities of color exactly. that are seeing the most amount of health care disparities. Exactly. And the, and the data supports it. You know, um, communities of color have more chronic conditions mm. that are never addressed, never treated, right. have more likelihood for um, maternal death mm -hmm. during a pregnancy, uh, more uh, childhood deaths as well. Um, so we have we have the data to support the fact it's not just about genetics right. it has a lot to do with environment mm -hmm. because it's when genetics meet environment that you get health or ill health so how is the federal government the state government and here at a local level how are we trying to get towards health care equity what is being yeah. done yeah so the Biden administration has done a number of initiatives that are in the uh, spectrum of health care equity um, but the biggest thing that they've done is to create the 988 lifeline okay. hotline. Tell me about and this. That, so, so typically when there's an emergency, we call what, 911, right? right? 911 automatically almost dispatches the police mm. as well. Mm -hmm. Problem with police interfacing with mental illness is that you're probably going to get incarceration instead of being taken to the mm, hospital mm, 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 because they often aren't trained to deal right. with the behaviors of a person who is mentally ill and out of control. So it's true. threatening, it's uncomfortable. 70% of the time it winds up being uh, a, an arrest. Mm -hmm. And we know that most of the calls from 29911 are behavioral health calls. So we need to find a way to get behavioral health people to receive the call. Right. So they can appropriately triage and send people where they need to go. And, and that, that's, that's what, that what 988 number? is. Okay. So for the audience listening, if you have an emergency, and you know somebody is having an emotional uh, breakdown or difficulty along that spectrum, you should not call 911, you should call 988. And that number is active, it's across the whole country, and the feds have put that in place intentionally to increase care to people with mental illness and substance use disorders and to decrease the rate of incarceration for people who are mentally incapacitated. It's so important, and you know, MHSD, you know, is a local organization. Exactly. How do you all help with situations like these? Yeah, so we have a number of things in place. So we have our crisis team that'll go out into the community uh, to work with people or de-escalate over the phone. Mm -hmm. But our latest initiative is to promote mental health first aid. Come you on. need to be trained in it, Malik. I agree. Um, mental I health agree. first aid is critical because the reality is these crises occur in our personal environment, 
I'm not there to help with the crisis, right. nor are people who are trained. You have to be able to help your own child, your own family member, know what to say, what to do, and how to respond. Mental health first aid is, a, is an eight-hour training for the general public that we partner with, Health NAMI, NAMI of oh, New yeah, Orleans, you know NAMI? as well as the Louisiana Public Health Institute, to train, our goal is to train everybody in this city on mental health first aid. It is so important, everybody. Yes. I have to take a class, Dr. Denham. You, thank you, you so much for being here. And if you all want more information about the services they offer at MHSD, including that mental health first aid, head over to MHSDLA.org for more information.